Man or devil, this gonna be Buck's last day amongst the living. What exactly he do to you? Call it a professional robbery. I know who you are. That love, the outlaw, hunts down those who trespass against him with no mercy. Where is it? Where is who? Your boss. My boss. Clearly, you don't know me. I heard Rufus Buck was back. So ain't no road to ask a friend to travel. You think Destiny's coming to you? My guns go back. Yeah, man. This is how easily the most anticipated film out, uh, and it has been for a long time. DB, I want you to do the honors and give this man a royal welcome, please. Ah, yes, with pleasure, because for starters, he grew up in Dallas and graduated from Duncanville High School, and I graduated from Louisville High School, so we often played against each other in sports. But we're here to celebrate him and his accomplishments as an actor. He recently starred in the Marvel series Loki and will appear in the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as Kang the Conqueror. I could get into that Marvel stuff all day, but you know him as Atticus Freeman on the HBO series Lovecraft Country, for which he received a primetime Emmy nomination. He starred in movies like White Boy Rick, The Last Black Black Man in San Francisco, Gully, and Spike Lee's The Five Bloods. He's currently starring as Nat Love in The Harder They Fall in theaters and available today on Netflix. Welcome to the show, Jonathan Majors. Wow. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wow. Man. Damn, Jonathan. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> man. And he got to laugh at his own intro like, ow. Hey, man. Wow. 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 Man, dude, you went from living in a car to all of this stuff that DB said. It's Can crazy, you, bro. Good morning, hey, hey, by the way. Grand Rises, yeah. man. Jonathan Good Majors morning. is here. And by the way, man, we share the same namesake. That's my government, too. I really very rarely reveal that, but that's why you, you, I know you're one of us. Um, but, man, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, man. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Guy's good, man. Guy's good. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I just got to talk about this Louisville thing for a minute. I don't know what sport you play, bro, but Duncanville, you already know what it is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you guys had a, <laughs> you guys had a crazy Yo. roster. Every year we played y'all, it was like, damn, we got to play these dudes again. But, you know, that that's a whole offline conversation about Louisville and Duncanville. Nah, you guys were hard too, though. You guys were hard too, though, for sure. Wow. Yeah, we won state. We won, we won state. Let's, let, let, let's acknowledge that. Yeah, scooping around for a while. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Jonathan Yo, Majors is here, man. Hey, by the way, salute Lovecraft Country. I, I don't know why it got canceled. Um, I didn't get it. I didn't get the snubs mm-hmm. at the Emmys. But regardless yep. of what the Emmys said or did not say, Regardless of why it got canceled, that was an amazing series, bro. What what, Kate, what was that experience like being on a set with Journey, being on a set with Michael K? What was that whole mm-hmm. experience like for you? I appreciate I appreciate that, sweet man. It's um, I still think on it, man. It was um, it was the first time that I ever had the chance to you know kind of step into something of that magnitude, you know. So. Mm-hmm. That was a blessing, you know, to be able to work my craft with with those individuals, as you said, Journey Smollett, um, Courtney B. Vance, Arjun Ellis, um, and my brother and friend, the late and great Michael K. Williams. Um, it was a it was a master class in humanity, you know. It was a master class in spirituality. We talk a lot about, you know, um, the ancestors and and what happens when you get all of us together, all these soldiers together, trying to tell this story. Um, on such a platform, man. So it was uh, it was a huge growing experience um, in my personal life, in my artistic life, uh, in my career. And to tell our stories on that stage was just, um, it was a blessing. You know, it was, it was a big blessing. And, and like you, you know, the world's got away, you know, and so I can't really wrap my mind around the fact that we're not, you know, going on. But um, I'm happy that it, it, it was, and it still is, because we're still talking about it. So, yeah. Man. Yeah. You, you never know the way things work. It may be again. Who's to say? Yes, you know, sir. I, yes, sir. Know, that's right. That's right. I, I don't. I don't know the politics behind it, but 
I, I think your story is amazing. You know, when I read about you and then I watch your work, of course, I was, you know, I'm from Oakland Bay Area, Jonathan. Of course, I was into the mm-hmm. last black man in San Francisco and this, and this history about in those Victorian homes that are in the Bay. HB often talk about Victorian homes in the yeah. Bay or yeah. the equivalent. I equate them to brownstones in New York and then even our history. Got it. OK. You know, the seeds that yeah. we planted, you know, that's what I loved about Lovecraft Country. Uh, that's what I love about uh, uh, th- this movie right here, The Harder They Fall. You know, we brought up yeah. Michael K. Williams. You play Nat Love mm-hmm. in this, mm-hmm. and I've seen Nat Love play before. Um, mm-hmm. I know Michael K. Williams played Nat Love uh, before, and Ernie Hudson played Nat Love. Michael K. Williams played Nat Love in the, um, the They Die by Dawn, and I watched that. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. What was, what, was, what was your relationship with Michael K? And did, and did you reflect on his portrayal of Nat Love when you went into this at all? Well, it's like it's like this, I guess. Like Mike, I mean, there's only there can only be one. Yeah. You know what I mean? There can only be one Michael K. Williams. You know, and and he played a role. He played Nat Love, and I watched it. And I think at the time I watched it, me and Mike had already uh, worked together, and our, our brotherhood was kind of already you know set in. So I had a very clear opinion on him as an artist. You know, um, he he led. Uh, an example for me, in many ways, on on the amount of vulnerability that we could we could uh, express as artists, you know, and how to live and kind of move through the world. So watching that, him watching him move through the world like that, and watching him portray that love, I knew initially there's no way I can do what he's doing, you know. But there is a certain place that he's coming from that I can try to venture into and see. You know, and one of the things that we won't, I won't harp on it too long because it's, yeah. it's art. So I could talk for, I could talk forever about it, right? But I watched his eyes, you know, I watched his eyes and I watched where his pain was coming from. And um, I was cast in the role uh, while we were shooting Lovecraft Country. And the thing about it is, you know, amongst brothers, you don't really got to talk about certain things, you know, yeah. when he saw what was going on and, and I knew he knew and we were like, it's all, it was like, literally, it was all good. There was no conversation about it. Um, except for the fact that he said congratulations, and I said, oh, I appreciate it, man. And he told me about James and our director, James Samuel. Um, he told me about him, and, and that was that was, that was was it, you know. And so it was just his support, you know, and there were so many things he could have done um, to, you know, make me feel crazy about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it was his role, you know, more or less. Uh, this is a different film. It's a different story in a way, but he, he originated the role, you know, so... And all things is a blessing to carry it on, you know, and he really gave me that blessing to carry it on. So yeah, I just did my best and, and tried to make him try to honor his work uh, and my portrayal of it as well. Absolutely. Jonathan Majors is here. Uh, we're talking about the harder they fall, man. Um, mm-hmm. We share some other things in common other than our first name. You know, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the greatest that have ever come out of music, you know, whether it's Tupac, uh, uh, yes, sir. Biggie, Pun, DMX. Mm-hmm. You know, and the list goes on. And I used to feel mm. a little awkward about my experiences with them after they transitioned. And then I realized my mm. big sister told me, you agree, it. you're supposed to tell the stories. You're supposed to pass mm. on the legacy. You're supposed to signify them and speak them into existence, even if they're not here in the mm. physical. And when I think about you, and I'm asking you about Michael K., we had Delroy mm. Lindo, uh, who's from Oakland, where I'm from, too. I'm set tripping, y'all. Oh. You I'm are, set trip really today. Okay, go yeah, ahead, I got Slay. to salute, uh-huh. salute. Go ahead, Jonathan. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know what I'm saying, Jonathan? You know what we do. But yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Del, we, we he, you and he was some of the last actors to work with Chadwick Boseman when y'all both starred in the Five Bloods. We had Spike Lee on, too. You know, and one of the things I realized after working with folks like Biggie and, and Pac, it really made me that experience gave me a whole new outlook on making the most out of my time on Earth. You know, because you yes, just never know. Having worked with Chad with Bozeman and, and Bozeman and you know and, and, and him pass, what was that experience like? And it, and it, it, it did it make you reflect on your own life and, and, and your own well, mission? It's kind of all connected in a in an odd way because I say it's twofold with Chadwick because uh, me and Chad were in Thailand together shooting the spike joint and. Um, you know, both these gentlemen, um, our brother Mike and Chad, are, you know, they're, they're like one's a generation above me and one's two generations above me. And I'm kind of I'm trying to hold down mine the best I can. And 
what they both had in common is they both kind of they both allowed me to kind of take space, you know, and be present with them. And they kind of both led by example. I can say that really, really for Chadwick because we had more in common in our in our coming up in the in the game a little bit, you know. And what I saw him do on set, you know, the amount of uh, vigor and the amount of uh, aggression he had towards the work and towards the craft, um, he honored it. I'll tell you one thing else about about Chadwick that he did that that really stuck in my mind. He's Chadwick Boseman, you know what I mean? He's Black Panther at the time. And the way things work on the set, and I'll conclude, but the way things work on the set is that you kind of get a number when you get there, right? That's kind of how it works, right? Big Dog's a number one, two. I mean, you, you know how the game works a little bit, right? So Chad was way up there, right? But Chad wasn't working that those many days, you know? I think he was working maybe not nearly as much as, as, as the original Bloods, right? Mm-hmm. And what Chad did, unbeknownst to a lot of us, is he had his number brought. He he went down five numbers. It's called the Five Bloods, you understand? And he went down five numbers on that call sheet. And I noticed it. And I thought, there's humility in that. You know, that's a good way of living. That's a good way of... And here he is. He's been playing Jackie Robinson. You know, he's played Third Good Marshall. Now he's playing, you know, our our hero in this story. And this man has this much humility and this much uh, dignity for the craft. And he did it quietly. And that's something I really took from him, you know. And he didn't say it to me. But I just watched it happen. I really took that from him. I said, yeah, you can do everything you want to do quietly and humbly. Um and when he actually passed, you know, when he transitioned, I was shooting, I was shooting, um, you know, the harder they fall. So I'm sitting in New Mexico, um, on my lonesome actually, because we hadn't come back yet. And he passed. And I thought about that, obviously, you know, in solitude. And, um, I thought, yeah, I'm just doing the work quietly now. You know, I don't know if we're going to make this movie or not, but I'm doing it quietly. Um, and that's something I took from, uh, brother Chad, um, and yeah, you know, you just do your best, but you know, and it, you look, and it's odd for me because like, well, man, this game is tough, isn't it? You know, you got two homies that you get close to, and all of a sudden it's like, mm, man, you know, it can go so quickly, you know. Um, I mean, you know that more than anybody, you know. Yeah, but come on, that's but, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, man. Um, that's why I, I honor it, I cherish it, and I signify it. That's why I'm asking you, you know, keep yeah. that spirit in. Jonathan Majors is here. The harder they fall, H B. The harder yeah. they fall. Hey, Jonathan, hi, it's Heather. Nice to talk to you and, and meet you and, and hear your voice. And I know that you said that it, it's art for you, but I was just curious, um, just being in this, do you ever or have you ever, like, remember hearing the good news that you got cast or you booked a job for something and you just super celebrated big time? And if so, do you remember what you did and mind sharing with us? Oh, man, yeah. So, I, so this is Lovecraft <laughs> Country. Right. So, I'm, yes. so the beauty of it is I'm shooting the last black man in San Francisco and uh, it's me and Jimmy Fails, um, uh, my leading man in that, in that, mm-hmm. you know, with, with, with partners in it. And so we're driving around and um, we get out, we're about to go see a, a movie and I get a phone call and, you know, it's all the trials and tribulations of getting a role. It's just crazy, you know, um, but they called me and told me I got it. And I go, oh my goodness! And I holler, I scream, I'm sprinting <laughs> down the road. Uh, Van Nuys, well, yeah, Van Nuys, uh, yeah, what else? Yeah, street? yeah, that street. Yeah, I'm sprinting up and down that street, and Jimmy Fails is like, what's wrong? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> and I go, I got the, I got the role, man. I got it. I call my mom. I'm crying, and then me and him sit in the movie theater and watching this uh, Joaquin Phoenix film. And I just can't even sit still. I said, we gotta go, man. We gotta get out. We gotta get out. <laughs> so we get out. And he's from he's from San Francisco. He takes me to this arcade, and I probably drink more whiskey than I should. I don't really <laughs> drink, but I was trying to kick it with him, and he can run. So I was trying to run with him to celebrate. But uh, we just rolled around San Francisco all day, just just taking in that taking in that moment. Wow. Um, that was great. That was great. Wow. That yes. was great. I mean, congratulations, yeah. congratulations. That's a big movie, that. man. That's a big movie. I saw one of the premieres. I saw Jay and the whole cast. It must be great. Standing next to a billionaire. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> you know what I mean? But again, humility, humility. You, know yeah. I mean? you can't, you can't smell it on. You know, you can't tell. He's still, to me at least, you know, uh, he's, he's. I mean, I don't know him that well, you know, but he's still a, a straight homie to me. You know, seems yeah. very down to earth and all those things. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, it's Jay, so you yeah, know, Jay, it is what yeah. it is. <laughs> Yo, Jay, Jay was worth. Jay was worth a billion before he had it in the bank. You know what I mean? To us, 
to the culture, to yeah. the community. So we don't mm-hmm. define, I don't define him by that. I define him by the exact same fundamentals you talk about, watching that man grow. Yes, DB, uh, I'm going to let you do I know he has to go, but I, I know you wanted to talk about the film. This is an incredible film, uh, Citizens. Uh, the cast is full of just all-stars. DB, go for it. Yeah, uh, so Jonathan, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about it on this show, and I'm sure you know about the unfortunate uh, tragedy that happened with Alec Baldwin's movie Rust. And so there's been a lot of conversation about gun safety on the sets of films. And being that this is a Western, you guys were dealing with a lot of firearms and things like that. I wondered if you could maybe um, explain how the props and things like that were being held and and, uh, dealt with on the set of The Harder They Fall, you know, and just kind of give some context as to how uh, prop prop guns were handled on this film. Uh, this film as in um, uh, my film, How They Fall, or Alex? Yes. Martin? Oh, so, so oh, there's yeah, yeah. three men, right? There's a fellow named Rick. There's a fellow named J.P. Jones and a guy named Joey. Um, forgive me for, for not saying their last names, but, but those are the three guys that really um, equipped us and trained us on... Um, it, it, it's just a term like like ha- gun handling. That was mm-hmm. Joey who taught us how that you know. There's a lot of tricks. I mean, if you watch uh, R.J. Kyler, he does some amazing things uh, with his uh, firearms. Um, but the safety measurements were impl- were implemented by all three of them, and we were I mean, we were drilled big time. We always wore um, eye safety. We uh, there were certain things. If you drop the gun, you don't. You, you just you just walk away. You inform Joey, who was, you know, the big handler on them, or JP, you know, who's our prop master. Um, I mean, they are, the thing about them is they're, they have to be treated like, um, they're like wild animals. They're like organic beings. You know, there's there's a lot of things you can do to make them safe, um, but ultimately it's a team effort, you know. That's three people to deal with another grown person dealing with a firearm, you know. I mean, they are not to be played with. They are not toys. Uh, what we do in movies are done in movies, you know, and still there's a reality that these things can, um, are actually made to uh, maim and in some cases take life. And so there has to be a, uh, for us, there was a great understanding of that, you know, and in the film, we even knew that. I mean, we, we had a great understanding amongst the cast. We don't play with each other with them. We didn't uh, draw on each other with them. You know, if we were to work on, we turn our backs to people. And because uh, you got to practice, you know, but you practice in a very safe, isolated area. Um, it's quite unfortunate what happened um, on that set, especially because it's it hits close to home in a way because it's, you know, I love New Mexico. I love Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, and it happened, you know, and in, in I think I believe in, in some of the same places we shot our film, you know, um, it's a tragedy. You know, I, I would say that it's a tragedy. And I, and I hope that, you know, that prop master and uh, Mr. Bowen and. Mm-hmm. Um, those who have been affected by this event, you know, um, and the production, you know, find a way to really, really, it, it can't happen again. It just, it just can't happen again. And um, we need to implement as an industry uh, things to, to put that in place. I mean, a, a take, a movie is not worth someone's life. Absolutely. I ended with that. Jonathan yeah. Majors, thank you for joining us. The harder they fall, it's in theaters. We're talking Idris, Idris Elba. Uh, Zazie Beats, uh, Regina King, Delroy Lindo, Lakeith Stansfield. I mean, geez, Dion Cole, Damon Wayans wow. Jr. Just in one sentence, I know you have to go. Why should people go see this movie, The Harder They Fall? And what's the importance of the storyline? Well, this movie this movie is going to change the planet. I'll say that. Um, and the, the importance of uh, uh, in the movie in, in one line, I guess. Um, um Everybody's an underdog. Yeah. Everybody's what? That. Say that again. Say that again. Everybody, everybody's an underdog. Everybody's an underdog. If you don't know who Nat Love is, look him up. Real person. Uh, even wrote his own autobiography. Uh, was famous. Born enslaved. Um, as a free man, um, he learned about literacy when at a time when literacy was illegal. Black man. Um, here in the United States, it talks about a part of our history we don't often talk about, the black influence in, the, in, in terms of the cowboy industry. Um, and so thank you for making this film. 
Jonathan Majors. Hopefully we'll see you in person soon. Congratulations, man. You've been on fire the past two years, man. God bless you, brother. I appreciate that. That'd be good. All right, you Jonathan too. Major, citizen, give it up, man. Make sure y'all see it. The harder they fall in theaters now. Netflix today. Watch it up next. Mike Muse is coming back. If y'all want to get at him, 888-742-3345.